Welcome to the next video about my own function in Glutter's miniature. This video will not be about software upgrades, but about some mechanical changes. This video is about moving my Glutter's miniature from functioning as a ceiling lamp to being able to be placed somewhere else than the ceiling. This change is due to me moving places and thus having a new environment to adapt to. Before going over the details I want to cover the requirements. The first requirement is GLaDOS itself. The second requirement is that a 3D printer is required to recreate this upgrade. The last requirement is some wiring with mains voltage to provide power to GLaDOS. That was it for the requirements, let's get going with the design. First I would like to remind ourselves about the context. My GLaDOS miniature is designed to be mounted below a horizontal surface. This is usually a ceiling, but because I don't have easy access to power lines on the ceiling in my new home, I need another solution. This means that I need something that acts as a sort of cage to provide this horizontal surface to mount GLaDOS to. The interface for mounting GLaDOS is a cylindrical plate with a total of 8 screw holes. This means that I need to create a surface that also provides these screw holes. Because my printer has a fairly limited build volume of 220 by 220 by 380 mm, I need to find a solution that can be assembled out of multiple parts. I decided to use an hexagonal shape for this purpose. The surface consists of a single hexagon on which GLaDOS is mounted on. Around this hexagon, another layer of hexagons is added to provide a surface that is greater than the diameter of GLaDOS. Corners are added to the outer edges of the hexagons to create a more rounded shape. The resulting floating surface now needs to be anchored to the ground. For this, the straight edges of the hexagons are mounted on the connectors. I left out one side on purpose to create an opening for GLaDOS to be more visible through. On the added connectors, a longer straight section is added, followed by another one. These arms hold the whole structure up. Below the arms, another piece called anchor is added to act as the interface of the bottom surface to the arms. It has three additional connectors on its sides. The outer ones are to interconnect anchors with the help of more straight pieces. For the open structure, small caps are added. The connectors in the center lead to more straight pieces that point in the middle of the structure. The center of the floor of the structure is the last missing piece. For this piece, I imported and traced back the aperture logo. The resulting shape is then used as a decorative element that connects the anchors to each other. The result is a cage around GLaDOS with an opening to the front. You might have already noticed that some parts have several small openings. These are zip tie channels for routing cables. They consist of a revolving groove for a zip tie to slide through. The parts of the whole structure are connected to each other using lots of M4 screws and nuts. In my first iteration I had around twice as many screws and nuts, but I then redesigned all parts to reduce cost. I also changed the shape of some parts to save on filament, like at the arms, the radial features on the sides. As for electronics, I simply use what I call a danger cable. The name comes from the fact that it is a mains voltage cable that is simply cut open at the other end to connect the rest of GLaDOS to it. At this point I want to point out that you should not do this at home if you don't know what you are doing, since an accident with mains voltage can be lethal. That's it for the design, let's move on to building the whole thing. The first thing to do is to print out all parts. This proved to be quite the challenge, since a lot of large parts are involved. The total print time sums up to roughly 154 hours. These were printed mainly in the evening and also during the weekend when I had time. You can see a collection of time lapses playing here in the background. After all parts were printed, I began assembling the hexagons. These are connected together using two M4 screws. The center hexagon is laid in the center from the top. Since it is secured from all sides and it should always be pulled down, I deemed this design to be sufficient. Next I connected the arm anchors to the hexagons. I then began the assembly of the lower part of the structure. I connected the bottom arm anchors to the center and to each other using the connector pieces. Then the arms were added to this structure. Finally, the hexagons were placed on top of the arms and secured using more M4 screws. After the overall structure was assembled, the next step is to mount GLaDOS into it. For this, the ceiling mount adapter is first secured again to the main cylinder. Then GLaDOS is lifted into place and the center hexagon is mounted to the ceiling mount plate. I made sure that the movement range of the center servo is roughly aligned with the free section to the front of the structure to allow equal movements to the left and right. With this, the mechanical assembly is finished and GLaDOS is now properly mounted again. The last step is to electrically connect GLaDOS to mains voltage. Here, the danger cable is first connected to the Vargo terminals in the main cylinder. The cable is then routed along the zip tie channels to the ground. With this, GLaDOS is now mounted and electrically connected. Let me show you that she can still move. So originally I had planned to do some really cool video with some dialogue and some teasing and so on. Uh, turns out that the Raspberry Pi inside the um, 
inside the display here it does not work so I, now I have to do it live because I want to uh, to finish the video so yeah now I hooked up to Glados here via this cable it goes in somewhere right here and now I can control the servos via um, the laptop here for example here is the center uh, servo this can rotate um, pretty fast I probably have to reset this so that it's properly reseated but the yeah, overall pretty much uh, or pretty large travel range um, I can also change which servo I want to use so here for example I can also choose uh, the location of the head so I can change from this position for example to uh, this one sometimes the servos make quite some noise so yeah this is also not interpolated in anything so yeah she agrees so yeah that's pretty much it so yeah just being able to control some servos and so on probably have to work on it a bit Yeah, and because the demonstration also fell apart, um, I also wanted to show another thing, and that is that I finally managed to get the voices running. So last time I could say something uh, with auto. Hi, my name is Otto. This is by just queuing up sound files after each other. And this now works for Gladys too. So I found a TTS engine. So I can do this. I am content with my current location, but like to look down to you more still better than being a potato. Yep. And that's pretty much it. With the demonstration done, let me go over the outcome from this video. A new mount for GLaDOS was developed, printed and assembled. The mount was verified to carry the load, as seen in the demonstration. This video was not expected during making the previous video of the series because it was caused by me moving places. This means that the outlook will remain the same as last time, meaning the next step will be the rework of the communication protocol I used to control the body of GLaDOS. You might also have noticed that GLaDOS can now talk the same way as Auto. I managed to create the word sound files for GLaDOS using a free TTS engine I found on GitHub. The link is in the description. As usual, it has been quite a while since my last video. A lot has been going on that prevented me from working on my projects. Currently, I only have a very limited amount of time available to work on my projects, and this will continue to be the case for the next while. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one.